I saw a police officer outside, so I think they come to get me. And I want you all to know I didn't do it, it wasn't me, and I have an alibi. <laughs> So now that we clear this out, <laughs> we can go to the topic of today's lecture. First, I would like to thank Claudia for initiating my arrival here. And I would like to thank Radu for organizing uh, this series of events because it's not only one, it's one of three. I traveled 11 hours to get here by plane and by car. And it was worth every minute. You have a lovely place, lovely city. So, thank you for Thank you for attending. I will introduce myself very briefly. My name is Sam Vaknin. I am a professor of psychology and a professor of finance. In the outreach program of the CS Consortium of Universities. CS Consortium. Consortium. Uh, of university. And I'm also a professor of psychology in Southern Federal University in Rostov on Don in Russia. Uh, Southern Federal University in, in Rostov on Don in Russia. But you can all relax. I'm not Russian. I'm an Israeli. <laughs> so right now I'm not going to bomb you. <laughs> um, Radu asked me to present my work a bit. I'm going to use maybe three minutes and then we get to the topic. I make it a point to be involved in all the controversies of modern <coughs> psychology. And right now I think there are three major controversies, at least in the West. Yeah. When I say the West, I mean United States, United Kingdom, CS is a consortium of American universities, one Belgian university, and one Israeli university. CS is a consortium of universities in Maravitania, Statele Unite, and Israel. So I think there are three controversies, major controversies right now. Number one, is psychology a science? Primul and prima controversie is, is psychology a science? Or a pseudoscience? Or a pseudoscience? Is it, for example, a form of literature? The best psychologist ever was Dostoevsky, probably. So there is this debate. And I'm involved in it. And the second major debate nowadays is the attempt to redefine mental illness as a reaction to trauma. For example, borderline personality disorder. Is probably going to be redefined as a form of reaction to complex trauma. I am pushing an agenda where I suggest that narcissistic personality disorder is a post-traumatic condition, not a personality disorder. Judith Herman, professor at Harvard, she came up with the concept of 
CPTSD, Complex Post Traumatic Stress Disorder. Complex Post Traumatic Stress Disorder, CPTSD. And she's suggesting that uh, most personality disorders are actually forms of CPTSD. Și ea susține ideea că majoritatea tulburărilor de personalitate sunt de fapt o formă de reacție la tulburări complexe de traumă. So there is a growing movement to redefine, reframe big parts of psychology as trauma studies. Există o, uh, există o mișcare în psihologie de a redefini o mare părți ale psihologiei ca fiind reacții la traumă. And I'm heavily involved in this. I actually pioneered most of this uh, movement. As you will see in today's lecture, we are going to discuss trauma a lot. I hope this lecture doesn't traumatize you too much. <laughs> I do my best. <laughs> But we are going to discuss uh, trauma. I'm going to give three lectures in, uh, in uh, this city. The first one is today about the concept of self. The second one tomorrow about cluster B personality disorders in adolescence. How can we diagnose borderline personality disorder, for example, in teenagers? Or narcissistic personality disorder? Can we diagnose psychopathy at age 6? I'll give you a hint, yes. How to do that? And early interventions. Cum putem face asta și cum putem interveni cât mai timpuri. This is the second topic tomorrow. Asta va fi a doua, a doua temă de mine. And the third topic is who is normal? Iar a treia, al treilea atelier va fi despre cine este normal. What is normal? Ce înseamnă să fii normal? <laughs> I am convinced that all of you are convinced that nobody is normal. Sunt convins că toți sunteți convins că convinși că nimeni nu e normal. Every, everybody, everyone is a little crazy. Where is the line? Where is the thin line separating normal and healthy from disordered and ill? So this is the third lecture. Today is a much more theoretical lecture. The next two lectures are much more practical, much more like practical, much more hands-on. This lecture is highly theoretical. How do you know that I exist? Not physically. I exist physically, I assure you. But how do you know that there is somebody inside? How do you know that I have a mind? How do you know that I feel that I am? How do you know that I feel that... What's your name? Marina. Marina. How do you know that I feel that I'm Sam and not Marina? How do you know that? The answer is simple, no? Because I tell you so. It is self-reporting. Self-reporting. I report about myself. Self-reporting. I'm telling you. Okay? I'm telling you. The concept of self, the concept of self relies 100% on self-reporting. Theoretically, 
I could be a robot from the future. Teoretic, I could be a robot from the future. Chinese robot. I could be a Chinese robot from the future, and I could be programmed to tell you that I have a mind or a, or a self. You have no way, no way, to make sure whether this is true or false. We have no access to other people's minds. We make assumptions. We say, they look like us, they tell us that they have a self, so they must have a self. If I asked you for a loan of a hundred thousand dollars, those of you who have this kind of money, if I asked you for this loan and you had the money, would you give it to me? I report to you that I will give you the money back. I am giving you a self-report that I will give you the money back. I'm telling you, I will give you the money back. Not one will give me the money, right? You are not nice. <laughs> I really need the money. Okay. You don't want to give me? No problem. But the only case, the only case we accept what people tell us 100% without thinking, without doubt, without questioning. The only case is when people tell us, I exist. If I tell you anything else, you will have doubts. And I mean anything else, you will have doubts. You will question. You will go on the internet. You will do something. But when I tell you I exist, I have a mind, I have a self, you accept it immediately. There are three concepts in there are three concepts in psychology which are and I'm trying to be very gentle questionable. Self, individual, individual, and personality. These are three concepts that are invented out of thin air. They are not validated by any research or study. On the very contrary, they are invalidated by almost all the studies we have in psychology. The concept of self dates back to the 1920s and 30s. And continues well into the 1970s. Cohort, self psychology. The concept of individual is much older. And the concept of personality is a bit newer. And all three are complete nonsense. Anyone who has experience with other people, anyone who works with other people as therapists, anyone who works with, uh, with clients as psychologists, anyone who has a family, <laughs> Anyone would tell you that people are not fixed entities over the lifespan. The self, 
is stable across the lifespan. Sinele, personalitatea este stabilă pe parcursul vieții. In the theory. În teorie. But there is not a single human being who is stable across the lifespan. Dar nu există nici măcar un individ care să fie stabil pe tot parcursul vieții sale. Individual means divided from. Individual. Individual înseamnă diferit de, adică altfel decât ceilalți. Dividere, latin. Din latin, dividere. But there is not one human being who is divided from other people. Dar nu există nici măcar un om care să fie divizat de ceilalți oameni. And the personality is a stable pattern of traits behaviors, cognitions and emotions over the lifespan. Iar personalitatea este un model stabil de cogniții, emoții, comportamente and traits. And, and traits, personally. Și trăsături care se manifestă pe tot parcursul vieții. There is no such thing. <laughs> nu există așa ceva. There is absolutely no such thing. There is no human being whose emotions, cognitions, traits are stable from baby to the grave. No such thing. Este nici niciun om care să poată spune că emoțiile lui, cognițiile lui, stările lui sunt la fel de din perioada de copil până la moarte. Okay. So if the self, the individual personality are nonsense, which they are. Dacă aceste concepte de individ, personalitate și sine sunt prostii, ceea ce și sunt, counterfactual nonsense. Nonsense because that's not reality. Uh, prosti în sensul de că sunt contrafactuale, adică uh, realitatea arată că nu, nu există. What do, what do we have instead? What can we have instead? Atunci ce, ce mai rămâne? Ce mai rămâne în psihologie? And this is the topic of today's article. Și acesta este uh, tema atelierului nostru. People are not lakes. 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 Oamenii nu sunt lacuri. People are not lakes. People are rivers. People are like human beings are like rivers. Human beings are dynamic. They flow. The landscape changes, like the Danube. Like Heraclitus said. Pantare. Everything flows. You cannot step inside the same river twice. Because it's not the same river. The water has changed, moved on. So human beings are rivers, not lakes. And using this simile, using this metaphor, we can begin to discuss an alternative to the concept of self. First of all, I recommend that you uh, somehow get access to this book, Dissociation and Dissociative Disorders. Editors are Dell and O'Neill. It uh, was published, I think, in 2009, but it is still the best book ever written on dissociation. We'll come to the issue of dissociation later. Vă recomand această carte despre trucurile dissociative. Este scrisă în 2012 și este în continuare cea mai bună și exactă carte despre aceste teme. Three, three scholars that I recommend that you start your journey with these people. Philip Bromberg, Dante Cicchetti. Sometimes I think that people become psychologists because they are traumatized by their own names. I mean, imagine, you're a child and you are called Dante. <laughs> Of course you become a psychologist. Yeah? So, Dante Cicchetti and Michael Rutter. 
Okay. Before we go, before we come to the alternative, we must know what are we throwing to the garbage? What is it that we are discarding and replacing? Înainte de a trece la alternativă, trebuie să vedem ce anume exact alegem să aruncăm la noi, ce alegem să nu mai dăm cu dăștirea. The self, the self is formed according to old theories. Now I'm talking about, I'm talking about the old theories of the self. The theories of the self that we are still teaching in universities, in some places, not everywhere. <laughs> So, the self forms is created via a process called integration. Jung called it constellation. So the self either constellates or integrates, depending which school of psychology you are. Remember, this is not this is not my work, and it's not the modern view. This is I'm just giving historical background. There are two pathways, two ways to constellate and to integrate, two ways to develop a self. One is called introversion and involves narcissism. Healthy narcissism. Primary narcissism. Not the kind of narcissism that is pathological later in life. Not Donald Trump, for example. Okay. So, introversion and narcissism, it's one pathway, I will come to it in a minute. And the second one is separation, individuation. Let's start with introversion and narcissism. But according to Jung and Jungians in, in general, the child creates a picture of himself and of the world. He creates a theory of mind about how other people work, how the minds of other people work. The clinical term is mentalization. And he creates a theory of the world, how the world works. And then he sees himself in the world, because he is the observer. And he begins to pay attention to himself. Suddenly he realizes I exist. He didn't know it before. He thought maybe that he's part of mother or mother is part of him. But suddenly he realizes, oh, I exist. And then he says, oh, I exist. And he falls in love with himself, basically. 
chiar există și, practic, e ca și cum se îndrăgostește de el însuși. Freud called it autoeroticism. Freud era fenomenul autoerotism. So he falls in love with himself and he starts to study himself. Se îndrăgostește de el însuși și începe să se studieze pe el. It's like he has a new toy. Me. E ca și cum ar avea o nouă jucărie pe el însuși. Me. And he forgets everything. He's inside himself. Introversion. And this is done via narcissism. It's a narcissistic reaction. Self-referential. This is one thing. Even, even much more important, even much more important, is separation individuation. Important. Separation individuation is a concept in object relations theories. Melanie Klein, Vera Mahler, etc. There are two, two phases of separation individuation in life. Eighteen months to twenty-four months. And when you are an adolescent. In both cases, you separate from the parental figures and you become an individual. But for the self, for the formation of the self, only the first separation individuation is important. You will see in a minute that separation individuation is the mirror image of introversion narcissism. When the child is 18 months old, those of you who are mothers can confirm, about 18 months old, between 18 months and 24 months, the child begins to explore the world. The mother is a safe base. She, it's called a safe base in clinical theory. So the child, the child is holding mommy's leg, and then he lets go of mommy's leg, and he walks three steps, and then he looks back. Is mommy still there? If mommy is still there, the child has object constancy. Copilul se agață de piciorul mamei și vede pe mama ca o bază sigură, se îndepărtează, da? dacă se îndepărtează câțiva pași și se întoarce, se uită din nou către mama și o vede că este încă acolo, atunci... Uh, uh, Object constant. Object? Object constant. Uh, își formează uh, constanța obiectuală, în sensul că are o bază sigură la care se poate întoarce oricum. And then the, the child turns around, runs back to mommy and hugs her. If you are if you are 18 months old and you need to leave mommy behind and go and explore the world. You need to be very, very brave, very courageous. Imagine, 18, 18 months old, that the only safety in the world is your mommy, and you let go of it. And you run, you run away from mommy, and you explore the huge world. To do that, you need to be grandiose. For a baby to do that, the baby needs to be grandiose. He needs to feel that he is godlike. Narcissism. 
For the baby to separate from mommy and to explore the world, the baby needs to become a narcissist. Pentru ca un copil să se despartă de mamă, să se separe de ea și să exploreze lumea, copilul are nevoie să fie narcisist. And some of them become politicians. Just kidding. Okay. So this is, these are the two processes that create the self. Because when you walk away from mommy, you create a boundary. Separation. You begin to realize that you are not one with mommy, but you are two objects, and you create a boundary. Now, if the mother is selfish, immature, narcissistic, absent, depressed, dacă mama are diverse probleme, cum ar fi să fie uh, uh, imatură, selfish, immature, narcissistic, etc. Egoistă, narcisistă. This is called in, in clinical terms dead mother. Dead în ghinș se numește mama oameni. Andrei Green invented the phrase dead mother. So, if the mother is dead, emotionally dead, The child cannot separate. The mother is blackmailing the child not to separate. And this sabotages the formation of the self. The child has one very big need. The safety to become. You think food is important? It's not. We have experiments where children were not given food, but they were given a lot of love and tactile, skin to skin contact. And they were perfectly happy. În care copilor nu li s-a dat mâncare, dar în schimb li s-a dat contact emoțional, îmbrățișări, legătură cu o ființă umană și au fost perfect fericiți. Children don't need food. Copiii nu au nevoie de mâncare. Well, they need food. <laughs> But that's not the main issue. The main issue is for the mother to allow them to become. Da, cea mai importantă uh, nevoie a lor este ca mama să le permită să devină cea mai If the mother doesn't allow them to become, they never have a life as adults. And so, they remain stuck with infantile regression. If you are not allowed as a baby to separate Then you, become, you remain part of mommy. And there is infantile regression. You remain baby, you remain infant. With infantile defenses. Like splitting. Splitting. The psychologists say <laughs> splitting when when you see everything uh, bad, good, uh, right, wrong, dichotomous thinking. Yes, not only comportment, but there are defenses. In, in the sense that you, for example, you would not be able to see the world as integrated, but you will see the world as bad and good. Everyone would be bad or good, right or wrong, evil or... You, always you divide everything to two categories. Never gray, never in the middle, never nuance, no nuances. This is called splitting. 
Mecanismul de apărare infantil presupune existența doar a obușilor, da? doar alb sau negru, doar bun sau rău, doar. Da? Why? Fără nuanțele de gri. This is very interesting. Why? Dar de ce se întâmplă? Why babies who are not allowed to separate from mommy develop splitting? De ce uh, copiii care cărora nu se permite să se despartă de mama dezvoltă disociere? Disociere is dissociation? Yes. No, splitting. Dissociation is something. Splitting is like dividing. It's like we call it dichotomous, dichotomous thinking. Thinking in dichotomy. Okay, this one the gândire dichotomică. Yes, da? much better. Thinking in dichotomy. Why? Because if mommy, if I'm a baby, and mommy doesn't let me separate. I become very angry. I want to separate. But mommy doesn't let me. I become very aggressive. But I cannot think that mommy is bad. She is frustrating me. She is making me aggressive. But I cannot say that mommy is bad. Because I need mommy. I need mommy for food, for shelter. I need mommy. I cannot say that she is bad. It's very frightening to say that she is bad. So I say, as a baby, I say, I am bad. It's my fault. And this is called bad object internalization. I internalize bad object. But if I am bad, mommy is good. Dar dacă eu sunt rău și accept cominția asta, înseamnă că mama e bună. Splitting. Și asta este dihotomizare. Mami, all good. Mami este în întregime. Baby, bună. all bad. Copilul este în întregime rău. And for, for the entire life, that person believes himself or herself to be bad. Și în felul ăsta, pe tot parcursul vieții, acea persoană o să creadă despre ea că este rea. Unworthy. Că nu merită. Unlovable. Că nu poate fi iubită. Nu cam nu iubită. This is the classical theory. Aceasta e teoria clasică. This is historical theory. Hmm? Now we come to the latest developments in, in psychology. It is the idea of dissociation. The new thinking is that when the child is frustrated, no when the needs of the child are not met, they are not fulfilled, the child is so traumatized that he will try to forget, cut off and forget the frustration and the hurt and the pain. But it's not so new. Everyone in psychology likes to think that they are big revolutionaries. 
because many psychologists are mas- narcissists. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. Um, dar eu nu sunt cunoscut, adică uh, multă lumea ar crede că cei care sunt uh, revoluționari în psihologie sunt, uh, vor să fie cunoscuți, dar ei nu sunt narcissiști. But revolutions are rare. Evolution is much more common. Revoluțiile sunt rare. Evoluția e mult mai desîntâlnită. Actually, long before this new school, this is the school of dissociation. This new school is school of dissociation. Școala de școala disociere. Long before this school. Mult înainte de această școală. Already there were scholars who were thinking in terms of dissociation. And they were known as British Object Relations. And others. So long before the dissociative school, there were already scholars who said the baby, when he's frustrated, breaks apart, breaks up. <coughs> breaks apart, literally. And so, for example, Winnicott, Donald Winnicott, who was a pediatrician. Winnicott came up with the concept of false self. When the baby is confronted with a withholding mother, a dead mother, when the baby is traumatized, abused, instrumentalized, used, parentified, forced to act as a parent, not a child. When all this happens, the baby breaks up simply. And Winnicott said that the baby invents another self. And that other self is the false self. And in narcissists, in adult narcissists, the false self is the only self. So adult narcissists don't exist. Adult narcissism is not about presence, it's about absence. That is not Vaknin, that is Kalber. Campbell suggested that borderline personality disorder and narcissistic personality disorder are forms of absence. He called it emptiness. He said these people are empty. There's nobody home. There's nobody there. Instead, there is a false self. A piece of fiction, a theater play, a movie. But there's nobody there except the movie. Except the theater. Kelberg spunea că tuburarea narcisistă de personalitate și tuburarea uh, borderline de personalitate uh, sunt mai mult despre absență, în sensul că nu e nimic înăuntru, nu există un sine. Există un, e un sine fals la care se raportează persoanele care au această tuburare. When the baby is confronted with such massive frustration, when the baby is not allowed to become individual, copilul se, se confruntă cu o traumă atât de mare că nu se permite să devină individ. The baby dissociates. Copilul dissociază. 
but the baby dissociates in highly specific way. Da, Not in every way, but in highly specific way. Dissociate in a way very specific. Okay, before I go to the baby, to the dissociating baby, I will give you the definition, the modern definition of dissociation. So now this definition of modern term is dissociation. Dissociation is a disruption in all internal processes. Dissociation is the Discontinuity, disruption in all internal processes. Emotions, cognitions, self-perception, everything is disrupted. And it is experienced in three ways. Amnesia. Amnesia is a form of dissociation. Depersonalization. The feeling that you are not there, you are not you. That you are an observer. And derealization. The feeling that reality is not real. That you are in a nightmare or some surrealistic landscape. This is classic dissociation. There is a fourth way. And the fourth way is the baby's way. Babies forget. They dissociate. They, they forget. They have amnesia. We don't know if babies depersonalize and derealize because we cannot talk to them. But we know that they forget. However, there's a fourth mechanism. And this fourth mechanism is unique to infancy and adult narcissists. A strong proof that adult narcissists are actually babies. Anyone who had a narcissistic partner knows that it's absolutely true. They are babies. So, this fourth mechanism is what Freud called at the time fantasy defense mechanism. Fantasy defense mechanism. Okay. <laughs> fantasy is a form of dissociation. Why? Because we escape reality. Bye-bye reality. We escape reality. And we create an alternative reality. A virtual reality, a metaverse. <laughs> Another reality. The, the, the clinical term is paracosm. Paracosm. So the child creates a very powerful fantasy and because mother does not allow the child to become an individual in reality, the child becomes an individual in the fantasy. We call this compensatory fantasy. It's a compensatory fantasy. Everything the child is not in reality, he is in fantasy. The false self of the narcissist is a fantasy defense. It's a fantasy, it's a paradox. In reality, the baby is helpless. The false self is omnipotent. In reality, the baby cannot guess, cannot predict how the adults will behave. The false self is omniscient, all-knowing. 
sinele uh, fals știe tot este omniscient. Fantasy is the major form, possibly the exclusive form, of dissociation in children who have dead mothers. Uh, this, uh, So the false self is a special case of an imaginary friend. You know that children have imaginary friends. You have it in horror in horror movies, like with Stephen King. The child has an imaginary friend, which is actually a demon. <laughs> But most imaginary friends are more benign, so children have imaginary friends. As long as the mother allows the child to separate, the imaginary friend is what we call a transitional object. You know the babies who hold the teddy bear? <laughs> Or favorite pillow? <laughs> Or favorite blanket? <laughs> These are transitional objects. It's transition from merger, fusion with mommy to separation from mommy and the world. So the imaginary friend is a transitional object. It makes the child feel safe to take on the world. If the mother does not allow the child to separate, the imaginary friend becomes permanent. Fixation. Imaginary friend becomes fixated. And Dacă in narcissism it's called the false self. Everyone, everyone is frustrated by money. There is no such thing to not be frustrated by money. When you are 12 months old, mommy, uh, you cry and mommy doesn't give you to eat, you're frustrated. You, you are crying and mommy leaves the room, you're frustrated. Mommy sleeps, you are frustrated. Mommy has a life. And this life is dynamic and not in the, under the control of the baby. So frustration is inevitable. All babies are frustrated. Those who become healthy and normal and those who become mentally ill. They are all frustrated at the beginning. <coughs> And you remember that I said that frustration, hurt, pain, trauma, they cause dissociation. Here is what happens. The baby starts off as a unity with mommy. Unitary entity, baby, mommy, mommy, baby. It's one thing. That is well established with experiments. That's not a psychoanalytic uh, dream. So he starts as mommy, baby. Then, He wants to separate. He is frustrated. He cannot control mommy fully. Object constancy is threatened all the time. 
substanța obiectuală este tot timpul amenințată. So he dissociates. Așa că el se dissociază. If the frustration is minor, dacă frustrarea este minor, minimă, the dissociation will be healthy. That's healthy dissociation. And it will disappear when the baby grows up and becomes adult. The dissociation will disappear. However, if the mother is what I what Andre Green calls dead mother, narcissistic, selfish, insecure, selfish, insecure, egoist, demanding, blackmailing, if she is this kind of mother, if she is this kind of mother, the dissociation will rigidify, will become rigid. And you will have this kind, you will have this kind of human being. Totally broken inside a thousand times with a thousand dissociations. This is what the inside of a narcissist looks like. This is what the inside of a borderline looks like. And so we will have severe dissociation. This leads to the next innovation in psychology, which is now what I'm telling you right now is the main, the main, the new school that is emerging in the West. So this is the latest. You're getting breaking news from CNN. It's the latest. Each one, each segment, each one of these, let's make it a bit more. A bit more presentable. Let's assume that there were four massive dissociations. Four massive dissociations. Each of these dissociations, each of the dissociated states, I'm sorry, each of these dissociated parts, comes with emotions, affects, comes with affects, emotions, comes with cognition, comes with memory, comes with uh, beliefs about the world, etc. So, each of these parts is a scheme So these are schemas. Those of you who know or heard of schema therapy, schema therapy is based on schema theory, the belief that people have organized units of emotions, cognitions, memories, beliefs, values, etc. So a broken, dissociated person will have multiple schemas. But these are not schemas like in schema theory. These are self-states. In schema theory, each of these has emotions, cognitions, beliefs, values, theories, memories. The self-state has also aggression and coping strategies. Why? 
Because the baby is angry. You remember? The baby is frustrated. He's very angry. And so the aggression remains there. Attached to the schema. To the scheme. So each scheme has aggression and a way to cope, some strategy, some attempt to cope. Adaptive scheme, scheme that is built for adaptation, is called a self-state. The third state The first function of the self state is to protect the child. I want to emphasize again, we are talking about pathological development. In healthy development, the child will have self states but of a different nature. I'm, I'm right now dealing with pathological development. The first job is to protect the child. The child is under attack. The child is not allowed to become an individual. He is not allowed to put boundaries. If he puts boundaries, he is punished. If he refuses to play the role that the mother gives or the father gives him, he is punished. And he is not, he, is, he doesn't receive unconditional love, he receives conditional love. He receives, this kind of child receives the message, I will love you only if you perform in a certain way. If you do not perform this way, I will not love you. You are lovable only when you perform. Your performance is lovable, not you. So the child needs to protect itself. And we see this in pathologies like narcissistic personality disorder, borderline personality disorder. We see the protective function of the self state. So the narcissist is afraid of narcissistic injury or narcissistic mortification. <coughs> Mortificat. Mortification. Mortificare. Mortificare. Yeah, I will explain. Narcissistic injury is when you challenge the narcissist. Narcissist thinks he's God. He thinks he knows everything. He thinks he's all powerful. He never, he never makes mistakes. He's perfect. You cannot teach him anything. So if you disagree with the narcissist, 
Dacă nu ești de acord cu narcisistul? If you criticize the narcissist? Dacă îl critici? If you correct the narcissist? Dacă îl corectezi? If you offer help? Dacă îi oferi ajutor? To the narcissist. narcissist. If you give the narcissist advice? Dacă îi dai cumva sfaturi? That's narcissistic injury. Asta este o o vede ca o rană în narcisism. Mortification, narcissistic mortification is even more severe. Mortificarea narcisistă e chiar mai severă. It is when you shame the narcissist in public in front of people that are important to the narcissist. Este atunci când îl, îl, faci, îl faci de rușine pe narcisist în, față, în, în mod public, în fața oamenilor care sunt importanți pentru el. The self-states of the narcissist protect him from injury and mortification. Stările sinelui pentru narcisist îl protejează de mortificare și de... We will see how a bit later. Similarly in borderline. The borderline is afraid of two things. She has anxiety. She has two types of anxiety. Abandonment anxiety. She is afraid to be abandoned and rejected. And engulfment anxiety. She is afraid to disappear. She is afraid that the partner will take over her, and she will vanish. Uh, engulfment and measurement. De So this is this is why borderlines, borderlines, typical borderlines. Uh, until recently, we thought that most borderlines are women, <laughs> which was very convenient for male uh, psychologists. That is not true. About half and half. But for convenience' sake, and because I'm a man, I will use a woman as an example. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so that's why a borderline approaches you. She wants intimacy. She wants love. She wants affection. She wants regulation of her moods and emotions through the partner. So she approaches the partner, and then she's terrified of abandonment. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I think. Uh, And then she approaches, and then she's terrified because she feels that her partner is too important. Controls her. If he goes away, she will fall apart. Și dacă partenerul pleacă, ea va fi distrusă. So she rejects him. Așa că îl respinge. She approaches. Apoi ea. And avoids. Și ar apoi se depărtează. This is called approach avoidance repetition compulsion. Asta se numește, se numește compulsie de apropiere și respingere. Whenever the borderline is threatened with abandonment or rejection, Or engulfment. She uses her self-states in in self-defense, in protection. We will come to it. By the way, the clinical term is not abandonment anxiety. Everywhere you will see abandonment anxiety. Online, books. That is not the clinical term. The clinical term is this. Clinic, oficial, este anxietatea de separare și 
So, um, abandonment anxiety, separation anxiety, these are popular terms, they are not clinical terms. We have many such situations. For example, the word codependent is not a clinical term. It's not a clinical term, it's a media term. <laughs> The clinical term is dependent personality disorder. Okay, just. The first function of the self states. So let me let me summarize in two sentences and we continue. So <coughs> Baby, mother, frustration. Mother refuses to allow the baby to separate and become individual. Baby has aggression. Cannot externalize the aggression, cannot attack mommy. Attacks himself. Internalizes the aggression. Melanie Klein calls it the depressive schizoid stage. Depressive schizoids. Uh, depressive schizoid. Why? Because when you internalize aggression, it's a good definition of depression. Depression is a form of internalized aggression, but we we'll put it aside. So, internalized aggression, the baby breaks up. Dissociation. Breaks up. This is dissociation and creates self-states. Every baby creates self-states. In the new theory, in the new theory, every baby creates self-states. We don't have a self. There's no such thing as a self. We have collection of self-states, like a library, videotheca, videotheca, we have a collection of self-states like a library and then whenever we need we go to the shelf and we take the relevant book. This is the new model. In pathology, in pathology, the self-states have a special character. Character. Number one, they are protective. Not in healthy people. In healthy people, the self-states are adaptative. You need, there is a new environment, you need a self-state, you go to the shelf, you take the self-state and you work with it. But in pathologies, the self-states are protective. In pathologies, the self-states compete in a healthy individual, the self-states never compete. And so, there are differences between healthy self-states and pathologized self-states. In pathology, the self-states are dysregulated. Dysregulated. They are not, the self-states are not regulated from inside. House. It's in house. That's why we call this low organization or disorganized personality. 
Yes, we say we say borderlines have no organization or no organization. Protective, competitive, dysregulated. In a healthy person, the self states function well because of psychological defense mechanisms. This is this is this is this are this is a very new theory. So, but the beauty of this theory is that it has all the elements of Freud, of Jung, of you know all all previous knowledge is included in this theory completely, totally. I, my contribution is that I took this theory to another level. I will explain at the end in a few words. But let's first understand the theory. So, in, in, a, in a healthy person, Healthy person looks like this. Self state, self state, self state, self state. They all self state. We don't have a single self. That's nonsense. We change dramatically in reaction to environment. We surprise ourselves. How many times did you say, it's not like me? It's not like me, I don't recognize myself. I can't believe I did this. You didn't do it, another self-state did it. Remember that the self this is healthy. healthy. Remember that the self-states were created via dissociation. So they are dissociated. Because they are dissociated, they do not share all the memories. They do not share all the experiences. Even in healthy people. In one environment, you use, you use uh, self-state number one. You remember what is self-state? Emotions, cognitions, memories, uh, aggression. Coping strategy. <coughs> this is self-state. So it's like almost total personality. Almost. It takes over. You're in some environment and this is best, this is optimal solution. So number one takes over. Self-state number one has the experience. Not self-state two. Not self-state three. Not self-state four. Only one has the experience. And because, because the dissociation is partial, is not full, there is some sharing of memories and experiences. Some. some common database, but never 
Never even 60%. We know this when we study memory. Starting, starting with Elizabeth Loftus. And others. We know that we don't remember. Within 24 hours, you forget 50% of all data. Within one year, within one year, you forget 90% of all data. When you are asked to remember, you confabulate. You create stories. In 9 out of 10 cases, 9 out of 10 cases, these stories are not true. They are wrong. 9 out of 10 memories you think you have are wrong. They are not true. You see why people disagree all the time. About what happened. Now we know the number, we know that it's 9 out of 10, mainly because of experiments by Loftus and others, starting with Loftus. Loftus was a pioneer. And others? Where we followed, I mean, she and others followed people over periods of one year up to five years and administered questionnaires. There is a famous experiment which demonstrates the connection between trauma, dissociation, self states and memory. Nine eleven. When the terrorists attack the Twin Towers in New York, when the terrorists attack, uh, teams of psychologists interviewed people on the street. And they asked them, where were you? When the towers collapsed, where were you? What were you doing? Who, you, who were you with? Where were you going? These are questions. A year later, the same people were given the same question. Less than 10% of the memories a year later were the same like in the event. Less than 10% of the memories were the same a year later. This is 9-11. Even such a mega massive trauma is not enough to overcome dissociation. You must accept that you are not one person. There is no such thing as you. There is no self. It's nonsensical. It's against all the studies we have. You must accept that you are much more like a network. More like the internet. <coughs> with copies of copies of copies, redundancies. So, this is a health condition. Just as the image now, synotox. And in between, there is partial permeable dissociation. And defense mechanism. Why do you need defense mechanism? <coughs> because reality, if you allow reality without filtering, without reframing, 
permiți realitatea fără să o filtrez, fără să o restructurez, fără să o pui într-un cadru nou. The self-states will not be able to function. Stările sinului nu vor putea funcționa. The self-states are uh, organizing, organizational principle and hermeneutic principle. Stările sinului sunt principii organizaționale și principii hermeneutice. The self-states organize the world for you. And they make sense of the world. They make sense of the world. We call this hermeneutic principle. It's a principle of explanation. So they're not only organizational, but they're hermeneutic. They make sense. They give you meaning. O funcție de a-ți explica lumea, de a arăta, de fapt, semnificația lumea. But here is some unpleasant news for you. Da, trebuie să vă dau niște vești ca un moment locul. The world is totally meaningless. Lumea este în totalitate fără sens. And you are totally meaningless. Meaningless? Meaningless. Fără importanță. It's not exactly not important. Meaningless. There's no meaning. And even I, it hurts me to admit that I'm meaningless. There's no such thing as meaning. No such thing as sense. No such thing as goals or directions. Or these are all narratives. Stories. We are storytelling species. We are made of dreams. If a reality is allowed to penetrate, we will lose our essence. Our essence is inventing meaning. Victor Frank. Those of you. Inventing meaning. We need to invent meaning. But to invent meaning, we need to falsify reality. And we falsify reality through defense mechanisms. We refrain it. We rewrite it. By the defense So defense mechanisms are dissociative because they take us out of reality, away from reality. All defense mechanisms are dissociative because they they suppress reality. And they are the glue that holds holds the self states together in a meaningful way, in a way that gives us a narrative, a story. What's the difference between healthy and sick? This is the healthy. <coughs> Now, in a healthy system, in a healthy system of self states, we are able to falsify reality because we recognize it. We get a correct signal, a correct reading of reality, and then we process it. In pathological system, we get 
a wrong signal, we get the wrong reading of reality. Semnale greșite, primim o citire greșită a realității. This process is called cognitive distortion. Cognitive distortion. We are getting reality in. Reality is coming in to the system, but it is filtered. It's filtered. There's a membrane, and it is. It comes in wrong. Wrong data. Este filtrată și datele care intră în sistemul nostru de sine sunt sunt greșite. So what? What's the problem? There are two problems. Because the reality comes in in a wrong way, you are not self-efficacious. You can't act well in reality. Self-efficacy is the ability to act in reality and to act on reality to obtain beneficial outcomes, good outcomes for you. Self-efficacy is the ability to act in reality and on reality in order to obtain good results, good outcome. But if your input is wrong, you cannot get, you cannot secure good outcomes. You, you learn gradually to not trust yourself. You don't, as, as a mentally ill person, you learn to not trust yourself. And the second, the second problem, you have impaired, impaired reality testing. Your perception of reality is wrong. Impaired reality testing. Impaired reality testing. Impaired testing of reality. Defective testing of reality. Okay, I will test that reality deficient. So the system looks the same, which explains why narcissists can deceive you. Many victims of narcissists say he looked totally normal. He was so good, so nice, so kind, so caring, so good. Because from the outside, this system looks identical. Self states, defense mechanisms, everything looks identical. But the input is wrong. You take two televisions. If you put too much electricity, one of them will explode. Yeah. So the input is wrong. And so, through the cognitive distortion, there's a situation where someone like the narcissist, for example, is operating in reality in wrong way. Many mentally ill people Make a decision. They say, I cannot trust myself. I don't understand reality properly. I don't act in reality self-efficaciously. So I will ask other people to do it for me. The borderline wants her intimate partner to perform all these functions for her. Borderline, no? Borderline, 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 borderline,
să facă toate aceste lucruri pentru ea. The narcissist wants people to give him input about himself. Narcisistul vrea ca oamenii să-i dea informații despre el însuși in order to regulate his sense of self-worth. Ca să reguleze să regleze simțul lui de simțul valorii proprii. These, these mentally ill people, they outsource their ego functions. They, they use other people as the ego. They, are, they actually don't have a functioning ego. They use other people as ego. And this leads us to the understanding that self-states are not self-contained, they are relational. The self states interact with other people. And with the self states of other people. In healthy people, the self your self states and my self states will interact to generate good outcomes, mutually beneficial outcomes. But if I'm a narcissist, my self-states will become parasitic on your self-states. Because narcissists are stuck in infancy. They are symbiotic. It's a phase in childhood called symbiosis. Narcissists are symbiotic. Borderlines are the same. They are symbiotic. They are like parasites. They need you to regulate their internal environment. And because they take over you, they cannot accept you as external. I want you to understand this. This is totally science fiction horror movie. <laughs> healthy, healthy people, two healthy people. They, the self states of the healthy people resonate. Resonate, collaborate, interact, and then they go. Two people go. Narcissists, borderline, are not like this. They take your self states. They expropriate, appropriate your, they steal your self states. Because they are parasitic. They have no existence without other people. And then they use your self states as their self states. <laughs> so they cannot accept you as separate. Because if I took your self states and they are mine now, you, you don't exist, you don't have a self state anymore. They are mine. They cannot accept you as separate because they were not allowed to separate as babies. Narcissists and borderlines have no experience of separateness. They don't know what, how it is to be separate. They don't know what it is to be separate. 
Dar ce să știi și, și Bolton, dar nu știu ce înseamnă separare. Nu știu ce înseamnă să existe două entități separate, două indivizi separate. So the minute they see you, they want to merge with you. Așa to become știu, one, to fuse. Așa că nu ei vor să uh, se unească cu tine, să devină una cu tine. Now we know, we know for sure that self-states Uh, don't exist and don't operate without other people. And we know this because we study pathology. It's like Freud. Freud studied only sick people. <laughs> But he created the theory of healthy people. So we study the pathologies of self-state, hoping that the opposite is healthy. <laughs> you remember what I told you? You remember that I told you that the narcissist and the borderline, they come to you? And they steal your essence. They steal your self-state. There is a clinical name for this. Clinical name for this. Everything I'm describing sounds like Hollywood, but it's clinical psychology. So it's a clinical name for this. Internalization, introjection. The narcissist internalizes you and then he converts you, he changes you into an internal object. So he introjects you. This is seriously creepy. <laughs> Narcisistul te internalizează, e ca și cum ia sinele tău și îl, îl internalizează la el, iar apoi îl schimbă într-un fel pe care îl proiectează el, o combinație între introspecție și pro- proiecție. Da? E, so, e, borderline does the same. Și borderline face They create an internal object of you, like a photo, snapshot, avatar, like a photo of you. And then they say, this is the real. You're not real. Your photo is real. So, there is confusion between external and internal objects. The narcissist, let's assume that a narcissist is interested in you as an intimate partner. Nothing worse can happen to you. Okay. He's interested in you, in you as intimate partner. So the first thing he does, he takes a photo of you. Mental. Mental. I call it snapshotting. He takes a photo of you. Then he puts it in his mind. He makes it an internal object. And then he gets confused. He thinks the internal object is real and you are not real. And he continues to interact exclusively with the internal object, not with you. This is internalization introjection. Now, You are all psychologists, I hope. Um, can you give me an example of confusion between external and internal object 
not in narcissism. Not, not narcissism. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Can you think of a situation where someone, a patient, confuses internal object with external object? Remember, the narcissist thinks that external is internal. He makes mistake. He thinks external is internal. Can you think of a similar confusion between external and internal, but it's not narcissism? You're all in a state of shock. <laughs> psychosis. Yes. Schizophrenia, paranoia, psychosis, psychotic disorder. The clinical term today is psychotic disorder. Psychotic disorder. In psychotic disorder, there is the reverse process. <coughs> the narcissist confuses external object. He thinks it's internal. The psychotic is exactly the opposite. He confuses internal object with external. He thinks his internal objects are external. So, so how is all this connected to self-states? Self-states are objects, internal objects. Self states are internal objects. And we see in pathologies, we see that internal objects are intimately linked with external objects. This, this is the mind. This is the mind. These self-states are internal objects. And we see in narcissism, in borderline, in psychosis, we see that internal objects somehow are connected to external objects to the point that they are confused. <coughs> the pathologies are showing us, the pathologies are teaching us that self-states are connected to external objects. They are relational. Take away everyone around you, you will not feel that you exist. The emergence of you depends on object relations, depends on other people. If we, if we isolate a baby, which is a bit unethical lately, if you isolate a baby completely, there will be no baby. <laughs> there will be no one there. It, the interaction with other people is what makes you. You are not you are not this. You are not this. You, me, no such thing. That is not true. You are this. This is you. This is the Venn diagram. This is called the Venn diagram. So, this is you. The relationship make you. Other people make you. 
Asta ești tu. Că relația te face pe tine, da? Ceilalți oameni te fac pe tine. Take, take away all the other people in the world, there will be no you if you are baby. Da. There will be no you. Dacă îți fac toți oamenii din lume, toți oamenii din jurul tău, pur și simplu încetăți să mai există, dacă ești copii. We have cases, of course, of children who grow up in forests. Feral. They're called feral children. Children who grow up with wolves and tigers and so on. Sunt cazuri documentate de copii care au fost crescuți de animale. Casper Hauser types. And we know they didn't, didn't have anything resembling a self. Remotely. Și știm că nu au nimic care să se ca sistem cu un sistem psihic. Not even remotely. Nothing. It's well documented. So we know that other people are critical for formation of self states. I'm shortly coming to the end of the lecture. Yeah. Okay. In pathologies, you remember that in pathologies, the self states are receiving the wrong food. <laughs> They are not receiving correct data, correct information about reality. So the defense mechanisms cannot operate properly, or they give crazy results. So these are the self states in pathology. This is pathology. These are the self states. There is dissociation here. These are the defense mechanisms. In reality, is coming here, but there is a filter. For example, grandiosity. Grandiosity of the narcissist is a filter. Okay, this is the scenery, pathology, da? Reality that comes from the exterior, but no, it has to go through a filter, da? For example, narcissism. The narcissist is not receiving. The narcissist is not receiving correct information about reality. Because there is a filter here. Grandiosity. And this filter distorts reality, changes it. So the defense mechanisms are not working properly. At some point, the defense mechanism receives so much garbage that they stop functioning, they don't work. Because the defense mechanism are receiving garbage, wrong information from the environment, from reality. Uh, this is called confirmation bias. This mechanism is called confirmation. So, because of that, <coughs> they stop working. And we call this decompensation. So, at some point, the mechanisms stop working. There's decompensation. Because the mechanisms are not working, Reality is not filtered, is not changed, is not, there's no processing of reality. And the self-states get in direct touch with reality. This is how borderlines describe their feeling. The borderline says, says, I don't have a skin, I'm skinless. I feel everything immediately on me. Yes, the defense mechanisms are shut down. And so she experiences reality directly. The self-states are not built to cope with reality without defense mechanisms. They don't have to do, to do that. So the borderline or the narcissist or pathologized people, they act out. There's a process called acting out. Acting out is simply switching from one self-state to another self-state and then rewriting an imaginary reality for the other self-state. So I'll give an example.
That's a borderline with four eyes. No, 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 it's just a joke. That's a borderline with four self-states. She has filters. Yes, she is not receiving correct information. She is not receiving correct information from reality. For example, she thinks the partner is about to abandon her. But he is not going to abandon her. It's wrong. But she believes it. She receives wrong information from reality. Her defenses are so overloaded <coughs> with junk. Wrong information is junk. The defenses are so overloaded, they stop working. Decompensation. At that point, the self-states get in touch with reality. And the borderline has no defenses. She is defenseless. Eleven percent of borderlines in this condition commit suicide. This is this is how badly we need defense mechanisms. Eleven percent commit suicide. <laughs> it's a huge number. The others, the others, create a new reality. They create a fantasy. Remember dissociation? Fantasy defense is dissociation. They dissociate. They can't tolerate reality, so they cut off reality. They dissociate. Actually, in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, dissociation is a criterion, diagnostic criterion of borderline. They dissociate reality. They immediately create a fantasy. Compensatory fantasy. <coughs> and they select it. They select another self-state. So this, they were here, and they switch. It's a process called switching. They switch to another self-state. This self-state. Why? Because this self-state is better adapted for the fantasy. Now, in in 90%, vast majority of cases, the borderline, the borderline, would switch to another self state that is clinically not a borderline, but a secondary psychopath. Secondary psychopath. So they become psychotic? Non psychopathic. 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 So a borderline who decompensates would create a compensatory fantasy and would choose a psychopathic self state. Which a borderline not a typical psychopath, but a secondary psychopath. It's another type. It's called factor two psychopath. But it's a psychopath. She will become psychopathic. And this is this is what we call acting out. In acting out, the borderline will become Violent, aggressive, promiscuous, um, reckless, take risks, risky behavior. 
she would be she would become totally different. The self, second self state would be would have nothing to do with the first self state. But I mean, totally different than what the scenery initial. It's an example of the self state system in action. So an example of the state of scenery in action. Okay, I will mention in five minutes my contribution to to this emerging theory. Okay, And uh, then those of you who survived, <laughs> if you feel like asking questions, I'm here. Uh, there, there is of course like every, like every theory in psychology. in psychology. The self, the self state, the self states theory has problems. Of course, every theory has problems. I mentioned that the self states don't share everything. They don't share all the memories. They don't share all the experience. So. How come you feel that you are the same? How come you feel continuous? You don't get up in the morning and say, well, today I'm not me. <laughs> Some of you may wish, but you, know. you don't. It, it rarely happens. Well, and it does happen, it's definitely a pathology. So, There's a problem of identity disturbance. That's a clinical term. It's a problem of disturbing identity. If the self-state theory was 100% correct, everyone would have identity disturbance. <laughs> you would not feel fully integrated. You would not feel one. You would feel many. And the second problem is what we call trait constancy. Some traits, not many by the way, a lot fewer than you think. But some traits persist in all the self-states lifelong. Very few. Uh, people think that they have traits and these traits are in every situation for life. That's completely untrue. Most of your traits are unstable and Very few of them, if any, survive lifelong. But some do. For example, I like to talk. And I like to talk since I was nine. <laughs> so probably it's a constant trait. How do you explain this? If you have self states and they don't share everything, how do you explain trait constancy? So I came up, I came up with a new, a new theoretical, a new theoretical idea. And I'm now, I'm now making the rounds in all the important universities in the world promoting this idea. So you can watch, for example, my symposium, my colloquium in McGill, at McGill University, which is one of the leading universities in the West for psychology. You can watch my colloquium there. It's available on my YouTube channel. So I give a colloquium there. I'm about to go to Cambridge to give a series of collo two colloquiums. So I'm promoting this idea. And this idea is next stage of self states. Uh, 
să găsiți în invitație de pe Facebook, este un link către pagina de YouTube, în care explică, uh, explică aceste teorie. And this idea is pseudo Și această idee se numește pseudo identități. Again, nothing, nothing is totally new. Nothing is totally new. We have theories in, in, in psychology, for example, family system theory. <coughs> Where they have sub personalities, for example. But pseudo identities is new in some is a new idea in some respects. Dar totuși termenul de pseudo-identitate este oarecum din nou. Again, I, like all my predecessors, I studied pathology. When you study pathology, hopefully you get some insight into healthy people. Healthy. So I studied people with dissociative identity disorder. Dissociative identity disorder. And dissociative identity disorder is a new name for what used to be called multiple personality disorder. Don't ask me why Every two years, we come up with a new, <laughs> new term or new word for something that existed six years. <laughs> It's a hobby, a hobby of psychologists. They like to rename all the time. So I studied the idea, the social identities. In multiple personality disorder, there is a central entity, a central core. It's called the host, the host personality. Host. And you have many, many pseudo personalities they look like personalities and they are they are called alters 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 not alters so some alters can be small children some alters can be big some alters can be different gender you could have a man who has multiple personality and one of the alters or two or three will be women The host, the host personality decides which alter will be used in which circumstances. So the host has a coordinative function. Of course, it's also protective, like in all pathologies. Protective. 
Are funcțiile celorlalte despre care discutați de protectiv? Are... Dacă... Protective, relational, also competitive, but, but in, in DID, in multiple personality disorder, there is a coordination center. Da, oricum, ideea este că la tuturor de personalitate multiplă există un centru de coordonare, da? Această personalitate gasă. And there is no such thing with healthy people. Uh, nu există așa ceva la persoane sănătoase. There is even no such thing with narcissists. Nici măcar la tulburile narcisiști, la, la narcisiști nu există așa ceva. And there is no such thing with borderline. Și nici la tulburile borderline. Only in the most extreme dissociation, multiple personality, we have a coordination center. Doar în cazul de disociere cel mai extrem, care este tulburarea de personalitate multiplă, avem așa ceva, avem o personalitate coordonatoare. So, how healthy people, how do healthy people decide which self-state will function? Cum hotărăsc persoanele sănătoase care sparea sinelui va funcționa și în ce situație? You are healthy. You have four self-states. Tu ești sănătos. Ai patru self-states. Seven. Nineteen. I don't know. Who decides? How do you decide? Și în decine. Și în decine. În decine. Who decides which self state will go out and take over? Cine decide care starea sinelui este la suprafață și pleacă în drum? I have never received more criticism than that. I suggest In my work, in my work, I suggest that the self states, the self states are organized in templates. Not my idea, I'm afraid. Jung. Jung suggested that in early childhood there is what he called the self care. The self-care template. Jung a sugerat faptul că în copilăria timpurie există template-ul self-care. So, I borrowed the idea of a template from Jung. I didn't ask his permission. A bit difficult. But I borrowed it from you. And I organized all the self-states in a template. What is the template? Meaning, narrative. The template is a narrative. Story. So, the narrative decides which self-state will become dominant. In multiple personality disorder, it's not the outside that decides, it's the inside. In multiple personality disorder, there is an internal structure that decides which self-state will be used. Entitate interioară care hotărăște care starea sinelui să preia control. In all other people, healthy and not healthy. It's, it's a cue, it's environmental cue, it's a signal from the environment. La, în toate celelalte cazuri, adică și la persoanele sănătoase și la narcisi și la borderline, exteriorul hotărăște, e cel care are rol determinant în ce, care sine uh, preia control. Information comes from outside. Organized in a narrative, in a story. It's a template, and then a self-state naturally reacts. It's natural to react to a specific narrative. So, to cut a long story short, my contribution is to say that self-states alone are not enough. Uh, contribuția mea este legată de faptul că stările sinelui 
Nu sunt suficient. But da. we need some states with context. Avem nevoie de explicarea stărilor sinelui diferite, dar într-un anumit context. Narrative context. Într-un context al unei povești. Da? So, this together is called pseudo-identity. Și toate acestea împreună, stările sinelui împreună cu contextul cu uh, povestea, se numesc pseudo-identitate. It includes the third stage. Conține stările sinelui. Ego functions. Funcțiile ego and probes, simulations, uh, extracting information from the environment and framing it inside the narrative. Și diferite simulări care asta se referă la preluarea informațiilor din exterior și integrarea lor în, în povestea uh, noastră interioară. All the schools, all the schools ever, which deal with psychology, with the personality, I'm sorry, And with the self. Fit, fit perfectly here. Everything you can imagine. From Freud to defense mechanism to Jungian shadow to complexes to code self psychology to dissociation school to self state. Everything fits perfectly into this. This is like theory of everything in a way when it comes to personality. So, teoria integrativă a personalității, la conținut și conceptele freidiene, și Jung, și Umbra, și toate teoriile se conține. It also provides us with some therapeutic, therapeutic tools. Să ne ajută și cu anumite instrumente terapeutice. Frankl was very close, actually. Frankl? Victor, my good friend. He was very close. Victor Frankl, care e adlerian, a fost foarte aproape de acest lucru. This essentially, what Victor Frankl said essentially, was that we need a narrative. A narrative that endows us with meaning. So he was, he was very close, but he was not a structuralist. He was like a more descriptive psychologist. Victor Frankl a fost foarte apropiat, pentru că el era cel care ne spunea, zicea că avem nevoie de o poveste prin care să integrăm Tomorrow, for those of you who are not too frightened by today's lecture, tomorrow I'm going to discuss the 10 or 12 um, aspects of mental illness in children and adolescents, especially personality disorder. We discuss the There is a common misconception that adults are mentally ill. Children and adolescents are not, or if they are, it can be easily reversed. Uh, regrettably, that is exactly the opposite of the truth. Most mental illness is diagnosable already in early adolescence. Vast majority. Some of it, even in childhood. 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 Some There is nothing we can do with with uh, psychopathy by age nine, actually. There is a disorder called contact disorder. Contact, not contact. Contact disorder. Behavior disorder. And conduct conduct disorder. Conduct. And conduct disorder is psychopathy for children. In uh, there is very little we can do with borderline personality disorder after age 12. And actually it is diagnosable at age 11 or 12. But tomorrow I will try to 
go through the warning warning signs, the red alerts. Many of them not, many of them counterintuitive. Many many of them would sound strange. Mi nu am să o să trecem prin acele uh, semne de întrebare uh, care trebuie să ne pună pe gând la, la copii și adolescenți. Because early intervention is still critical. Pentru că în continuare intervenția uh, timpurie este critică. But we need to catch these problems extremely early on. Dar aceste probleme trebuie, uh, trebuie văzute cât de cât de repede posibil. Freud was The Boyer and after the Freud and after the Jung, <coughs> they they understood that therapists stand in for parents. They are parental figures. Transference, counter transference. And if we if we catch the patient in adolescence, we are faced with a very serious problem. Because adolescence is the second phase of separation individuation. There is negative identity formation. I am not going to be like my mother. I am not going to be like my father. Negative identity formation. And there is what we call reactance or defiance, so a challenge to authority. If we catch the patient too late in adolescence, too late is already 13-14. Our ability to intervene is very limited. So the early warning signs are critical. And again, many of them would surprise you, I think. I've tortured you enough. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening.